video we're going to look at solving equations that contain cubic roots and hopefully you've had some experience solving equations with square roots so this is going to be similar um, there are some subtle differences I have three examples up here so let's start with this one right here which says the cubed root of x equals 2 so we're trying to think of some number that if I take the cubed root of it I'll get 2 and maybe you could come up with that in your head which is great um, but I'm going to show you a technique for isolating x so that maybe when we get to a problem you can't come up with in your head, you can use this technique. So basically we want to isolate x, which means we need to get rid of this cubed root. And to get rid of a cubed root, what we're going to do is we're going to cube both sides. We're going to take both sides to the third power. Now the cubic root and the cube, these are operations that undo each other. And some of you are perfectly fine accepting that. But if you're you know, maybe thinking, hmm, I'm not sure about that, remember that a cubed root can also be expressed as a one-third power. And so if we think about the cubed root of x as x to the one-third power, and then we take that to the third power, we know by the laws of exponents that we would multiply these exponents together and one-third times three is one and we would just get x. Now you don't have to show all that work every time but I'm just trying to justify the fact that the cubed root cubed is just going to end up being uh, x or whatever is underneath the radical sign. Alright so on the right hand side we have two to the third power which is eight and so that is our answer, x equals 8. And it wouldn't take too much to check that, too much to convince you that the cubed root of 8 is 2. And so that works. All right, let's go to the next one, which is the cubed root of x equals negative 2. Now I put this example up here because when we're dealing with square roots, we know that having a negative is not a good deal. So let me, let me do this in purple down here. If I had something like the square root of x, equals negative 2. Well, I could, I could square both sides. Okay, notice this is a square root, not a cubed root. And I square both sides, and I get x equals 4. And I think, okay, that's my answer, right? x equals 4. But if I check this, and I do the square root of 4, it's supposed to come out to be negative 2. Well, that's not the principal square root. The square root of something is not going to be negative. So we end up with what's called an extraneous root if you've heard that before, and um, that extraneous solution, and you have to check it when you're doing square roots, that doesn't work. So this guy has no solution. Well, with cubed roots, we don't have this problem. Let's see what happens if I cube both sides of this equation. All right, I cube both sides to get rid of the cubed root. So if you have a square root, you square both sides. If you have a cubed root, you cube both sides. And that gives me x equals negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, let's check that. So if I put negative 8 under the cubed root, I get the cubed root of negative 8. Is that negative 2? And the answer is yes, because negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So therefore, the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. So this is one of the big differences when you're doing cubic, when you have cubed roots and you cube both sides. You can have a negative uh, result on the other side of your equal sign, and that's fine. Square roots, not going to work. All right, so let's look at this example here. I got a little more going on, but um, we're still going to, Start with the same step to get rid of the cubed root. We're going to cube both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and write this out, even though the, you know some of you can see the cubed root and the cube are going to cancel each other out. But remember that the cubed root of 3x minus 4 is the same as this, 3x minus 4 to the 1 third power. And then I'm cubing that. So by the laws of exponents, I multiply 3 times 1 third, and that's just going to end up with 1. So I'm going to end up with 3x minus 4 to the first power. So you end up with whatever's underneath your radical sign. Now on the right-hand side, we have negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, which is negative 64. 
And this should be pretty easy to solve from here. Just isolate x as you've done many times, I'm sure. What do we get here? Negative 60. This one's going to come out as a fraction. And we divide by 3. Oh, it's not. Never mind. Higher mathematics today. Uh, negative 20. I just made this problem up. So usually when I just make them up, they come out as fractions. Not this one. This one came out to be negative 20. Let's check it just to be sure. It's always good to check. So we're going to take negative 20 and we're going to put it right here where this x is. So I'm going to have 3 times negative 20. Take away 4. So 3 times negative 20, i got to do my multiplication first. That's negative 64. I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. That's negative 60. And then take away 4 is negative 64. And what number cubed gives you negative 64? That's what this is asking. And the answer to that is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 would be positive 16 times by negative 4 one more time would be negative 64. So that works. Yay. All right, so the basic idea to get out of this is if you have a cubed root and you want to get rid of it, you're going to cube both sides. If you have a square root to get rid of it, you're going to square both sides. And you could extend that. If you have a fourth root, you're going to take both sides to the fourth power. Um, but the big difference is when you have an odd index, remember this is called the index, when you have an odd index, it's okay to have negative values over here. There are solutions when you have negative values of cubed roots or fifth roots or anything with an odd index. All right, I hope that helps.